Hello friends, in today's video, I am going to talk about can a NRI seller do TDS compliances if buyer refused to do so. There are certain cases where buyer doesn't want to do anything, doesn't want to take any hassles and he says that because seller is NRI, so seller should do all the compliances. So is it possible for seller to do all the compliances on behalf of buyer such as filing TDS return, paying TDS and all those things. So this will be the topic of today's video. So let's begin. So hello friend, my name is C. Aruntiwari and I deal in NRI taxation and international taxation. Apart from that, I also deal in notice reply and litigation that is appeal filing in case of income tax. So today's video, I'm going to talk a very practical question which comes across a lot of time because you understand most of time when NRI sell property, uh, generally they sell property in stress. So whenever a buyer comes, they do not want to lose that buyer. Now, sometime buyer put this condition that whatever this taking TAN number or, or doing TDS compliance, applying for lower TDS, this all hassles belongs to NRI because he is an NRI seller and that's why all these compliances coming along. So, seller should take care of all these compliances and sometime buyer refuse to do that. So, can a NRI seller do TDS compliances if buyer refused to do so? And if yes, how? So before I start, I just want to say because I told about the stress sell uh, many times our NRI friends sell the property when th they really need the money for maybe personal reason to buy some property abroad or to fund their children's education or any other purpose, maybe any other purpose. So that time they need money immediately and they go for a stress sell. So how you can negotiate better when you are planning to sell a property? So I have given an interview with NRI Money Clinic, you might be knowing that channel and uh, I have actually uh, there explained how uh, NRI should prepare so that he can bargain better, he can negotiate better and get a better price for his property or her property. So if you want to watch that video, the link is given in the description also and I want to show you here as well. So here my video is listed, just uh, it has been posted recently two hours ago. So you can watch this video as well and understand how you can become a better negotiator if you want to sell a property. Now, so let's come on the first question. Can a seller, if he wants, can do all the compliances of buyer on his behalf? The answer is yes, he can do it and there is no problem at all. The simplest thing he can do, he can appoint a joint chartered accountant who can take care of buyer compliance and seller compliance both. Now you are selling a property and you do not want to miss the buyer. So you can foot up the charges. The charges for buyer compliance is not much. In our case, we hardly charge it some 7,000, 6,000 rupees depending on the work. So it's not a big money. You can simply just pay for that package and we can take care of buyer compliance. Suppose you want to do it yourself or you don't want to do it somewhere else. That's not a problem. What the things you have to take care? The first thing for buyer compliance, you have to take a TAN number. There buyer has to provide just his PAN card copy and his address proof or Aadhaar card copy. Only two document he need to provide to get a TAN. That much I think buyer can do. So first step will be taking the buyer's TAN number. Second thing is filing TDS Chalan. So whatever TDS will be deducted from your uh, property sale value. If you have applied for lower TDS, then the TDS rate will be mentioned in the TDS certificate. If you have not applied for TDS rate, it will be 22.88%. It can be more also if the property value is higher. In one of my video, I already have explained what is the exact TDS rate on the property, which you can find here. So in this video, you can see the exact TDS rate, which you can find out what will be your property value and accordingly, the TDS rate will be applicable. So as I told you, it is important that buyer should know the recursion because sometimes what happened, the buyer even can say that no, I will not take the TAN number, why I should take TAN number, uh, we can do like a resident, all those things can buyer says. So there you have to explain him that it is for his benefit. You have to create some awareness. You have to basically explain the recursion if buyer doesn't do. Actually, it is always in the favor of buyer to do all the compliances because at the end, he is going to take the property and stay there. And definitely he will not like to have income tax notices flying to his address once he settled down there. Now he also have to understand the NRI, if he is taking care of TDS compliances, he is basically doing a big favor. Then again, even after that, suppose the buyer doesn't understand, then you have to explain these things. This is not to scare the buyer. This is just to explain him that first thing, he doesn't have to do anything as a buyer compliance. Only he has to provide the PAN and TAN number, 
taking a TAN number, paying Chalan, filing TDS return, surrendering the TAN number, everything can be done by a chartered accountant. It can be done by us also. So he don't have to bother. Only thing if he's paying additional fees, which is 7,000 to 6,000 rupees per person. So even I'm telling you, even he goes for a resident sailor, still he has to do the TDS compliance and there also they generally pay anything between 3,000 to 4,000. So here he is actually paying additional to 3,000, 4,000. So if you want, you can share that cost or if you just want to make buyer life slightly more easier, you can pay the whole amount also. This generally happens where the seller pays the whole 7,000 rupees for the buyer compliances. This way, he doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to bother anything. And you can simply take care of buyer compliance as well. Definitely, it will be done on behalf of buyer. But a seller can do the compliance if buyer doesn't want to do. But even after that, suppose he doesn't understand, then you have to explain the recursion or a better part, you don't explain. You just connect him with some chartered accountant, some tax consultant who can explain him the recursion. The recursion is very harsh. Suppose a buyer who buy a property from a non-resident and he doesn't pay the TDS or he doesn't do the TDS compliances. What can happen with him? So the first thing, once he doesn't comply with TDS provisions, there is a severe penalty in the TDS compliances. And if simple thing, if I tell you, there is a 300 rupees late fees for every day, every day. Just understand if this notice comes after one year, he has to pay 300 rupees per day as a late fees. Apart from that, there is two different section under which he has to pay penalty. First for non-deduction, second deduction and non-payment. So if in short, I don't want to get into nitty gritty. In short, if I say it will be a big mess for buyer if he doesn't do the compliances. So. Of course, if the seller is paying the fees, he just have to give a PAN number and an address proof. It's it's not a hassle for him anymore. He can simply just relax. It, basically, if I say it's easier than buying property from a resident. So you just can show this video also. I think this video can also help him help a buyer to understand that it is in his favor, his benefit to do all these tedious compliances. And there is no hassle buying a property from NRI. If I say, I, if I give some few things, uh, which I already have mentioned in the video, which is posted on NRI uh, Money Clinic. So if I give you some examples, actually buying property from a non-resident is more convenient because most of the cases, they are more supportive. And most of time they give the best rate because as I told you, most of time and rice seller when they want to uh, want to sell property, generally it's a stress, a stress sell or they want to exit the market or they need money for some other purpose. So they don't mind reducing 50,000, 1 lakh or 2 lakh rupees here and there. So the pricing is even more as compared to resident who can wait for slightly more time. So all those benefits they are getting from buying a property from a non-resident and then this is small, small things which you cannot cringe about. And the only thing is a simple understanding and you just have to explain the things and things will work like a charm. So that's all friends. Again, I just want to summarize. If suppose buyer is feeling a hassle in doing TDS compliances, the NRI can do on behalf of buyer. Even TDS, TDS can be paid from NRI's bank account. There is no rule which says the TDS has to follow flow from the buyer's account. Buyer can pay that amount to seller and seller can pay that amount to TDS. So this way the compliance can be done very easily. So that's all in this video. If you have any other question related to NRI TDS or NRI legal, uh, you can just put a comment. If it's a personal, please don't put a comment. Send me a mail and either me or my team will come back. If it's a specialized question, personalized question, there will be a consulting fees. So that's all in this video. Thank you. Have a nice day.